What's going on guys? Today we are looking at an Excel Pressure Wave pressure washer that is powered by a six and a half horse Honda GX200. First, we'll give it a few pulls to see what's going on and as expected, it's not starting. The first thing we will do is check to see if we're getting a spark. To do this, we will remove the plug wire, then unscrew the spark plug. Always be sure to inspect the plug because it can give you a good indication of engine performance. But in this case, the plug looks pretty good. Then reconnect the plug wire and just let the spark plug touch something metal, which is also ground on the engine. Then give the pull cord a rip and you should see a spark. This is giving a nice consistent spark, which means that we have a problem, most likely with the carburetor. Now we'll start taking the air box off so we can remove the filter and get to the carb. This carb only had one bolt holding it into place because it came to me with two missing nuts. Also, in order to remove this carb, you will need to unscrew the long bolts that secure it to the block. Now that those are loose, I will drain the excess fuel out of the tank. I just use a pair of water pump pliers on the smooth parts of the long bolts so I won't damage the threads. Now that it's disconnected, we can remove the throttle linkages. I like to clean my carburetors over a clean space so I can see if something falls out. First, I make sure that the throttle and choke butterfly valves open and close with no interference. If you let a dirty carb sit all winter, these will get stuck. Next, I'll clean some of the gunk off the exterior before I start breaking it down. Then I remove the small bowl and make sure the fuel inlet tube doesn't have any restrictions by spraying some cleaner through it. Then I remove the main bowl of the carb to find a serious amount of buildup. This is an excellent example of what can happen when you go through the entire season without mixing any fuel cleaner in any of your fill-ups, and then you let that sediment solidify over the winter. Next, I test the balance tube and the internal bowl vent for blockages by spraying carb cleaner. These both connect inside via the emulsion tube, so when spraying into one hole you should see it come out of the other and some out of the bottom of the main jet. I'm not seeing much come out of the main jet, and when I try to spray into the main jet, I should see cleaner spraying into the throttle body, but I'm not, there's nothing there. This is a great sign that the main jet isn't clogged, but that there is a blockage in the emulsion tube before the carburetor. To fix this, I'm going to remove the main jet so I can spray the blockage directly. Remember that if you can see light through the jet, then it's probably not your issue. Also, always clean main jets with solvents and cleaners. Never stick anything bigger than your elbow into the hole of a main jet. Because if you do, you can throw off the air to fuel ratio by changing the size or shape of the hole. 
I'm not having much luck, so I switch to a bigger can with larger pressure, but the tube is completely blocked. None of the cleaner is going into the throttle body and most of it spraying back out towards me. To fix this, I will stick a small gauge needle through the emulsion tube until I can see it inside of the throttle body. Then I remove it with tweezers and the hole will allow the cleaner to do its job more effectively. And boom, the blockage has been removed and you have restored fuel flow. Then just make sure you give the carb and bowl a good cleaning and remove the sediment before you start to rebuild. Also, the main jet is made of brass and the carb is made of aluminum. So after you feel the jet seat, give it an eighth to a quarter of an inch turn. Otherwise you risk damaging the threads. Then put the bowls back on and you're ready to start installing it. Because I was missing the original hardware, I had to run to Home Depot to pick up some nylon lock nuts to keep them from vibrating loose. It's easiest to put the gaskets on the card first. then the control box, then mount it to the engine. Don't forget to hook up your throttle linkages and fuel line before you tighten the bolts down. Then just put the airbox base, gasket, air filter, and air filter box on. Then reinstall the spark plug. Connect the boot. Put the crankcase ventilation tube back on the airbox. And don't forget to clamp the fuel line back on. Now I'll give it a quick test run with no water to see if it fires up. And it's running, but I don't let it run long because without water in the pump, 
running the engine can ruin a pressure washer. To properly test a pressure washer, you'll need to hook it up to a water hose and connect the pressure washer wand so you can make sure the engine handles under load and without load. With the hose and wand hooked up, I noticed that the pressure washer will not run unless the trigger of the wand is depressed, meaning that the engine is not under load. This lets me know that I probably have to adjust the fuel flow rate or the idle set screw. First, I'll let it run for a minute or so, because you always want to make these adjustments on a warm engine. Trying to set fuel flow and idle speed on a cold engine is not ideal. And I say this with a caveat that I don't usually mess with these adjustments. They're most likely spot on from the factory and they're set to specifications by technicians who know what they're doing. However, I do think someone tried to fix this before sending it to me and changing the fuel flow rate doesn't matter when your emulsion tube is completely blocked. Then I remove the hose and just let water flow through so I can have both of my hands free. When it comes to adjusting fuel flow and idle speed, I really don't have any specific guidelines. I usually stop when I feel like it sounds good and I don't hear sputtering at idle or feel detonation at high speeds. Basically, you should have good power with no after firing or back firing. That being said, that's why I usually mess with these settings last. While the average Joe might start playing around with these first only to discover that they don't have a spark or better yet, they forgot to put gas in the tank. Anyhow, that's all for today. Please leave me a comment. Please subscribe. Please like. I like hearing from you guys. Um, I especially love the comments when someone says, hey, I just watched this video and I was able to fix my carburetor, my washing machine, whatever it is I'm working on that day. But wait, there's more. Guys, thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. If you like this video and you want to see more content like this in the future, please use the link in the description to check out my Teespring store. Other folks on YouTube are selling these t-shirts for upwards of $30. I've set all my profits on all the products to make $1.50 per item, whether it's a coffee mug, t-shirt, women's t-shirt, doesn't matter what it is. So be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and go buy one of these t-shirts and let the world know that you are an internet certified mechanic. Up, 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 up.